It's no secret that Fiora's burst is completely insane, and in the past she's had ridiculous amounts of movement speed to let her chase no matter what, but since then she's actually had a few movement speed nerfs. But with this build that we've put together here today, she actually feels like her former self again. Today I'll be going over Ashen's Genshin Silver Gun Spear Fiora build. Now, what separates this build from the more popular 18-foot spear variant, this build is more focused around having movement speed to make sure you can chase and secure those early kills while sacrificing a little bit of attack speed that you'd have on 18-foot. And truth be told, due to the fact that she has a wonderful auto attack reset and the fact that Lace Quiver actually fits her stats very well, you don't actually miss that attack speed all that much, and this build feels really good. Another thing that's really nice about Genshin versus 18 foot spear is that it's only a 2 zone weapon. You don't have to go to 3 zones the same as 18 foot. Now aside from the weapon, the rest of the items in this build are pretty self explanatory. It's your standard crit suite but with a laced quiver instead of say a flowers of fate in order to compensate for that lack of early game attack speed. Also, Lace Quiver brings 0.1 movement speed which also helps with your chasing potential, since Bucephalus just doesn't have that much movement speed to begin with. As for the route, we'll be starting in Cemetery, moving to Chapel, with only a few items we need to pick up in Chapel. After that, you'll be teleporting to Hospital using the Hyperloop, picking up a few more things, finishing both your shoes and your weapon by your third zone, and at that point you can start chasing people down if, for some reason, you don't just pick up all your items off of the many bodies that you will be slaying. Uh, you can go to dock afterwards by teleporting in hospital to finish basically everything in your build. At that point you'll only be missing a stallion medal, and you can go to either temple, alley, or beach to pick that up to fully complete your build. Now here's one thing that sets this build apart from just your standard spear build. It actually has a bit of a transformation about halfway through the game after you successfully kill Wickelene. With the VF blood sample, you'll actually be swapping into a Spear of Longinus, swapping out your Genshin Silver Gun. What this does is it gives you more attack power and also lifesteal which is a very valuable endgame stat. Now this next piece is a little bit more strange. If you happen to find a mithril at some point in your game by farming animals, you'll be replacing your boots with mithril boots. With Bucephalus replaced with mithril boots, that actually gives you a little bit more attack speed, it also gives you some nice defense and it frees up your accessory slot to swap into an emerald tablet. Now emerald tablet is nice because it gives you a little bit more CDR which you're kind of lacking in this build. It also helps to compensate for that crit chance that you lost by swapping out your boots. In general you should not be building emerald tablet unless you also have the mithril boots because you're going to be losing too much attack speed otherwise. If you can't get the mithril, just stay on the quiver with the Bucephalus, but you should always be swapping out your spear for a Longinus if you get the VF blood sample. Now as for your skill order, I'd recommend always putting points in your ultimate whenever available, and then aside from that, it's W over E over passive over Q. You should not be putting a point into your Q at all at any point in the game unless you're absolutely forced to. Fiora's Q is basically a damage loss. The time it takes to cast the spell is time you could have spent just auto attacking, which would have done far more damage anyways. Don't even put one point into it, don't ever cast it, it's not worth your time. And yeah, that just about does it. Let's check out an example game. So I'm picking up coffee because I know I'm going to be making some mocha bread later. Honestly, my RNG in this game overall has just been very poor. But I think I should be okay. Got my shock. And honestly, if I'm down a glass bottle, it's not the end of the world. I could always just pick it up and dock later. Oh, no, I got it. Okay. Well, we can leave. Uh, I'm going to head towards... Hospital now. Try and finish my my early game gear. Ideally, while you're here in hospital, you do want to get some alcohol, especially if you're trying to make mocha bread. Uh, that gives you pretty much the bulk of your food. Nice. Turns out we just out trade someone who hasn't quite built any defense yet. One nice crit also is all you really need. And they got us some nice SP regeneration, so we don't have to worry about that nearly as much this time. So we're actually great on food for now. And good on SP regeneration. Let's get this guy. Nice. 
So since we have our shoes finished and we have our Genshin done, we pretty much can't be outran. Even by a Yuki. Nice. These guys are kind of just giving us everything we need. And honestly, I won't say no to more SP regeneration as well. And while we're here in Pawn, it wouldn't be the worst idea to try and pick up a short rod, but we didn't get lucky. I'd rather just chase this ping. I am down to just fight. She also has her shoes done. She actually has quite a lot done. But we have more damage. And I don't think she can outrun us. There we go. So at this point we just need to finish our head piece, which just requires some stones and some branches. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to clear these bears. Just for some mastery, just for some potential good loot. You never know, you might get an early Longinus too, which would be very cool. There's really no reason for us not to chase this guy down. He's a little bit fast, but I think we can catch up. Nice. So since we got this mithril, that actually opens up the option to go for some mithril shoes. Uh, if we make mithril boots, that opens up another option for us to make an emerald tablet out of the force core we get from Wick once we kill her. So in general, I wouldn't go for the emerald tablet unless you also get mithril boots finished. Oh, we have a fjord down here that we can actually easily kill. We are significantly stronger than pretty much everybody in the lobby. Nice and easy. Oh, got ourselves another person. It's a very squishy Cicela build. We should be able to just like two shot her. Nice. So also one thing you should be kind of paying attention to is that since we are attempting to go for a Longinus, Make sure that you know what the recipe is, or at least study the recipe. You can also target it mid-game by pressing B. That is also an option. We have about a minute until Wick spawns, and her items are actually very important to us, so we do want to make sure we have the right materials going into that fight. In general, when you're taking Wickaline, I'd recommend either warding this bush or putting a camera here, one or the other. Those are your best ways of making sure that you actually have... Uh, line of sight on people who might come to, to stop you while you're doing it. What can be kind of challenging, especially if you get third party, so just be a little careful. I'm going to attempt to pull her out a little bit. Ooh, that's a scary third party right there. There we go. A little bit close, a little bit scary, uh, but we got there. <laughs> we got there after all. That was, that was actually kind of terrifying. Okay, current game plan. We're going to shift our items into our more rare stuff that we're looking for. We can finish the, the Emerald Tablet right away, because we've got this Flower of Fate. Uh, we're going to try and get a chain to finish up our shoes. We're gonna need some some light, some tights as well because we dropped those. Oh no, we just dropped those right now. We just need the chain. We just need to get a short spear here, as well as uh, some some steel. I know I dropped one steel back here, so maybe it might still actually be there. Oh, here's a steel. Nice. Need to get that spear as well though. Have a dial in there. There's the spear. Let's take her out before we do anything. Nice. 
Now the Genshin's done a lot for us so far, but we don't need it anymore. Spear of Longinus is significantly better. Yeah, we lose a little bit of that movement speed, but the lifesteal more than makes up for it. And now once we get the chain, we're probably gonna go for alley or cemetery to grab it. Once we get that chain, we can officially swap into our, our emerald tablet. Oh, we have an ISIL nearby. <laughs> I feel honestly, I feel bad for him. Like he's he's full build, he's he's feeling good about himself. And then Fiora shows up. And it's all downhill from there. We got more pings over here. Someone's trying to take the wolves. We'll probably catch them on the way over. Oh, it's a heart. Got the slow. Here we go. Now we just have one guy left to deal with and we're completely done with this lobby. Already a solid 10 kills. There's our chain. We can finish our mythical shoes. And the last thing to deal with is just a Jackie, which honestly we should have no trouble with. We have our weapon swap all set up. We're, we're in full wear material mode. Our food is very good. We have decent mana regeneration. At this point, it should just be easy to close it out. Critting a chicken for well over a thousand, close to a thousand two hundred damage is pretty insane. Now remember, even though you have a lead, you have a large kill lead, you have a decent mastery lead, that doesn't mean you should stop farming animals. Farming animals is still incredibly important at all points in the game. Mastery is really important, it kind of doesn't matter what point in the game, until you've hit 20 mastery, like, you're not even level 20 yet, you're not level 20 mastery either. There's really no reason why you should ever stop farming, especially if you have the ability to. The only thing you should be worried about is that you don't want to necessarily run out of mana, because your ultimate does drain a lot of mana while you're fighting animals. Also, one more thing is to remember to always grab console when you go into new areas. You don't want to get jumped by someone who you, you can't see coming, or maybe someone might third party you, things like that. So make sure you, you, you make a beeline for consoles like right away, especially in late game zone situations. Early game, I wouldn't worry about it as much, but late game, consoles are extremely important. Now, ideally, I'd like to take this last fight while we still have the wick buff. We don't necessarily want that to run out, because that is a free just damage advantage for us. And I want to see what's in this gold box, so I wonder if we're going to get some free traps. Oh my god. <laughs> That's insane. As if we ever had a chance of losing this match anyways. No, we certainly don't. So we see that pink down there in temple, we know she's there. I'm going to sit down, regen all my mana. I don't want to necessarily pop my hot honey water right now because in the situation that we somehow get like a really long drawn out fight, I'd like to keep that. I don't want to have to use it right now. Oh, here we go. She's doing quite a bit of damage, but we just have more damage. We have more burst. The life still keeps us healthy and it doesn't matter anyways. Yeah, this build's honestly just insane. The burst damage is crazy. The early game chase potential with that extra movement speed. You finish your your shoes super fast too. I gotta say, this build is honestly really nuts.